So I'm going to move over to the output screen now. I'm going to use the page over here. And we've got output. Now we're going to tackle these in order as well. So output stereo, what does that mean? Well, in the connection uh, chapter, chapter two, we talked about using uh, XLR or TRS outputs and uh, that the unit actually shipped in mono mode. So we're going to see that here. We got mono mode, there we go. So that would mean a single XLR output if you're going to a PA, and a lot of PAs are mono, that you would want to go out in mono mode. I'm going to switch it to stereo because I'm using a stereo output right now with the TRS. So I'm going out to a computer for recording and uh, it goes through a little mixing board. That's in stereo. So that's what I would select there. Now there are a couple of other options that you can choose and we'll show you how they work. So I've got stereo and let's uh, let's just find an effect here. I'm going to find a, I'm going to turn off this reverb and, and delay, or sorry, the reverb and harmony, and I'm going to find this ping pong delay. So if I go delay, it would help if I turned it on. Delay. delay. You can hear it pan around left to right. Delay. 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 If I go into the setup menu and I change that to mono, Delay. Delay. You still hear all of the taps, but you don't hear them going back and forth. They're just all in the middle because it's a mono sum signal. So let's move along to one of the other settings here. Let's go dual mono. Now what does that do? Well, dual mono puts the guitar out on the right side and the vocals, the fully mixed vocals out on the left side. So I'll just put on a reverb here and I'll say, turn up my guitar. So I'm singing my song and the guitar is on the right and the vocals are on the left. So you might say, why would I use that? Well, if you wanted to go to a mixer and you wanted independent control over the vocal and the guitar levels, you know, you had a, a guy who was able to do that or you wanted to do it yourself, maybe a little mixer on the stage, that's a perfect way to do it. That's what uh, dual mono is usually the, the most used for with any of our products that have guitar in them. And that's the end of that. We have only three settings there. So vocal cancel, I'm gonna actually switch this back to stereo so you guys can hear me properly. What is vocal cancel? Well, this is a pretty easy one for us to cover. Vocal cancel means I want to listen to an auxiliary input and I wanna try and take the vocal out of it. So if you've got a, a, an audio track running in via USB or an audio track running in through the aux input, like you're listening to an MP3 player or something, and you turn vocal cancel on, it will attempt to remove the vocal from that particular piece of music. So you can kind of karaoke eyes, for you know, lack of a better term, uh, a song and try and remove that vocal so you can sing along with it, which is really handy. Now lead mute, so sometimes people confuse vocal cancel with lead mute. Lead mute is actually muting the lead vocal within the unit. So that's actually taking away my own lead vocal. Uh, so I can show you with the harmony block how that works. So if I have my lead vocal on, hello. Then I turn the harmony on, hey. You can hear that harmony, but if I turn lead, mu lead mute on, hey, hey, hey. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna turn the reverb off. All you hear is the harmony. Hey. And it's really hard. If you want to do a fun little game of chasing your tail, try and sing a song and only have the lead mute on. So you got to go. I'm singing my song and I only hear the harmony. So it's really hard to sing the lead because I can't hear myself. That's really tricky to do. So uh, have fun pulling that one off. And then I'm going to turn that back to off so I can hear myself, obviously. Then we've got the headphone limiter. Well, if you've got uh, in your monitors, you've got any kind of headphones and they're turned up quite loud, you don't want to damage your ears. So you might want to set the headphone limiter a little bit below this zero. Zero dB means basically as loud as, as we can make it come out of the box. If you turn up the headphone output to maximum, it's going to give you that. If you set the, the limit to you know a little bit lower, it's going to make sure that it gives you a ceiling that you can bump up against. Make sure that you don't get any huge spikes in volume, just a little bit to protect your ears there. So lastly, we've got lead delay. A lot of people are saying, oh, you know, you're putting delay on my voice. No, lead delay means whenever we process a vocal, there is a slight bit of latency because, the, you know, there's some, some computer cycles that have to happen in order to make the effect come around your voice. So what we've done is we've done a lead delay that you can say, I would like to slightly delay my lead voice in relation to the effect. So if I sing here and it takes this much time, just a teeny, teeny bit of time for those effects to turn on, I want to delay my lead voice so they line up exactly together. So there's a voice sync, which means it's going to sync up things like your harmony voices and doubling and those kinds of things. Um, but it may not necessarily sync up, you know, the, the instant onset of a reverb or a, a chorus or anything like that. Um, there's also auto, which means that as the load on the processor changes and the latency changes slightly, that the delay, de the lead delay changes as well. Um, that's something that, that I actually quite like using because it's dynamic and it sounds consistent all the time in terms of the output, but the amount of, of, of change of my lead uh, input, you, you can perceive that it's happening, so it's something you might need to get used to. 
So that brings us to the end of chapter 3b, the output section.